So we're all dressed out to go into the uh, object Ukriti, the uh, shelter object. And we're going from SP 1430, the change facility. We're going to walk down this road here, enter the uh, the uh, checkpoint into the local zone and shelter object down here at the east end. Oh yeah, let's go. Going right in, you can see the old sarcophagus and the chimney in the background. And this crane you might remember from my video about the new safe confinement. And now we're gonna enter the old shelter object. Beautifully creepy hallways. So we used to see the smoking area. There was a sign saying you did smoking the And to be quite frank, I'm very, very happy that uh, as opposed to, for example, detecting chemicals or identifying chemicals correctly, it is so comparably easy to attach a sense to yourself which is able to detect radiation because look at that. Such dramatic changes in radiation levels, high radiation levels that we can encounter in here, it would feel quite creepy to to be there without this the sense of detecting radiation. It's like stumbling around a building site or, or a forest while being blind uh, as a person that normally sees, so to say. A very scary situation. The radiation levels right where we are aren't too bad, but the thing is, if you go on that corridor and walk a little further and actually enter the area where the molten reactor core still remains, about 150 tons of nuclear fuel remain in there, which molten together in a, in a big pile of, of junk, basically, of graphite, of anything that was in there and that made up the reactor core into 1,300 tons of fuel containing masses that remain in there nowadays. And if you go there and get close to these fuel containing masses, you can receive a fatal dose of radiation within minutes, minutes, even to this day, 30 years after the accident. Anyway, we are close to the control room. Now, just for your orientation, the new safe confinement NOC is to the west, turbine building is to the south, the reactor hall is that, that big square you can see, and we're heading right by the pink path to CR, that is the control room of unit number four. That's where it all happened, and that's where we're going right now. And here we are. So we're here in the control room of reactor number four of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Это было рабочее место инженера управления реактором. This is the reactor operator's position. Uh, this is the balance of plant, meaning the pumps and uh, so forth. And uh, at the far end is the uh, turbo generator set control. And uh, then there are back panels that have the uh, safety parameter display systems and things like that. Uh, it looks like all of the uh, control rod uh, position indicators have been removed from the, uh, from the uh, core cartogram over here, but there's one that is uh, just Evidently, it's just been laid out on the uh, on the top of the, the bench here. But uh, these were for the 200 control rods that uh, unfortunately did not make it all the way into the core when they tried to shut this reactor down. The uh, out here at the panel, it looks like they've uh, replaced a lot of things. But the uh, the button where the uh, fatal shutdown occurred was over here 
Um, they had the uh, so-called AZ button, the level five emergency shutdown button. I think they say they pressed it just because the experiment was done and that was a way to shut down the reactor. But unfortunately, they had too much uh, reactivity in the uh, the headers on the con or the leaders on the control rods and uh, ended up starting a runaway chain reaction that they couldn't stop. So the young man sitting here, Lenny Toptinov, dead. His supervisor, Alexander Akimov, dead. He was younger than I was and, you know, killed in this accident. And uh, the uh, deputy chief engineer, Anatoly Dyatlov, lived long enough to uh, give his account of, of the accident. And he argued with uh, INSAG about some of the technical uh, matters leading up to the accident. Um, the operators got a lot of blame initially. And the, the understanding now is that it mostly had to do with some unknown or understudied physics problems having to do with the RBMK reactor. So this is it. This is where the world's worst nuclear accident happened. But uh, peekaboo, let's find some hot spots. And this thing actually says smoker's room again. Kind of weird. So, this is one of the hottest spots I found in here. Maybe it's about, uh, yeah, it's about. 12 millirentgens per hour, so not, not terrible. But in the old Unit 4 control room, this is one of the highest. And uh, you can see here we're at axis 51. This tells us where in the building we are. That's 30 micro at this point. Behind this wall, you know, turbine. We think it's probably just leakage, uh, you know, water. Mm -hmm. Um, leaking down, you know, you see, uh, but, uh, oh, that's a detective. So they might have that or something? Yeah. <laughs> Not sure what that was measuring at the time, but let's check out some of the contamination in this room. Scale next end. Seems to be a lot of beta. Oh, 30. Okay, yeah, not bad. Well, at least gamma's not so bad. Yeah. That's a lot of alpha. Sweat, Stanley, in the control room floor at Chernobyl. All the way from Arizona. No flat, Stanley. From DeGrazia Elementary School. Uh, yeah, and uh, we go now. Back through that golden corridor where that one wall is totally covered in lead. You can see it on the left. And this is for a reason. I mean, you can see the dose rates here. We're exceeding 100 microsievert per hour despite the lead shielding. What an exciting place to be. So I sure hope that you enjoyed this visit as much as I did. And thanks for watching.